Hi there, my name is Amy and I'm one of the librarians here at Davis Family Library at Middlebury College. This video is one of four in our orientation series for students at the language schools. And in this video, I'll be talking about interlibrary loan and the research guides, including both language specific research guides and also the research guides for the language schools in general. I'll place timestamps in the description below to help you navigate to specific topics. And of course, I'll include links to any particular resources that I call out there as well. Thanks for watching. Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about interlibrary loan, using that as a way to acquire items uh, that the library does not already own. Um, and also talk a little bit about the research guides as a tool to kind of help you navigate library resources as well. So, start with interlibrary loan. Um, here I have an item uh, on Basque language and Basque culture that I have decided that I would like to use. Now, I want to encourage you uh, to make use of this tool as much as you feel you wish to. Um, of course, because the language schools are quite short in duration, usually just six to eight weeks, that means time is of the essence, especially where resource sharing is concerned. Uh, we tend to get digital items very quickly. So if it's an article or something like that, we often get those digitally transmitted to you, often, often within a day. I think generally we, we ask for at least a week to get items, but I can tell you from a lot of experience that digital items often come very quickly. So it's not that much of a concern for things like articles. But if you are looking for a book, something that might need to be sent here from another institution's library, obviously that can take a little time, which is only to say we are always happy to get you any and all materials that you want to have for your studies while you're here. Uh, but consider looking for some of those materials, especially if they're things that it might take a little longer to get, maybe maybe think about trying to get those requested sooner rather than later just to make sure that you actually have time to use them while you're here so that caveat aside again i just would encourage you never to let uh this these links when you come into a record if you see these links it generally means that we do not currently own the item in question and you will have to request it through ILL or perhaps another sharing method that may be available this summer. Um, but don't let this stop you, right? If you get into an item that you wanna use and you see this here, don't let this discourage you from actually requesting an item because most of the time they do come very quickly and we are always very happy to get you whatever it is that you need. Okay, okay, okay. Now, when you see these links, these are honestly kind of the same link at this point. Um, let me talk about this one first because it's, it's sort of the more critical link. You'll see it just says request via interlibrary loan. The first time you come in to uh, make a request through interlibrary loan, if you've never done it at Middlebury before, you'll actually probably get sent to a page that looks like this one, an update profile, user profile uh, page. Most of this information will already be filled in. Uh, the point of this is just to make sure that it's correct. And really the most important thing that you need to check is delivery location, right? And this, it'll probably default to Davis Family Library Circulation Desk. That just means if you request an item and it gets shipped to us, this is the place where you want it sent. And this is the place where you want it sent, but it's making sure that that's correct. So check everything here, make sure it's right. And then come in, you know, and, and you can say submit information. Mine's already done, so I'm not gonna submit it again. This is a one-time process. You won't always have to do this when you come to use ILL. It's just the first time you come in, you might be asked to do this. Every time after that, when you are here and you decide to click a request through interlibrary loan link, what will happen is you'll click it and it'll bring you to a nice pre-filled form with all of the information about the item that you're requesting. Always check it, always make sure that it looks correct, but it's it's normally correct. And then you just hit submit request 
and your request is made, um, if it's an article or if it's a book, it would, whatever it is that you're requesting, when it arrives, you'll get an email. If it's a digital article, it'll link back to this Iliad system where you can come and pick up a PDF of the article that you requested and it's yours forever. You can just keep it permanently. Um, whereas if it's a print item that was physically shipped to the library, it will tell you that your item is ready and to come pick it up at the Davis Family Library circulation desk. Whatever it is that you've requested, once it is ready for you to come pick up digitally or physically, you'll get an email letting you know that that is the case. If you would like to come check, or if you would like to just come make a request spontaneously, which you can also do through the new request button, you can just start one on your own. Uh, you can do that by going either to go slash I L L slash, which stands for interlibrary loan, which will bring you to the larger interlibrary loan page and includes links to the Iliad system, um, including a link just to start a request, or you can go to go slash Iliad, I-L-L-I-A-D, because it's a pun, right? Go Iliad, and then you always log in with your usual credentials, and I've got two-factor authentication on, so I have to do that. Usual credentials, just the first part of your Middlebury email address and your regular password that you use to log in to the network. Log in. Anything that is available for you to pick up will be here. If you have any items checked out, it'll be here. Don't need you. And then any outstanding requests that you have made but have not been fulfilled yet will also be listed here. You see I have nothing at the moment. Uh, but Iliad is the place where you can come to check on status of things. It's a pretty good system. It's pretty simple. And again, just don't let the necessity of requesting something through ILL prevent you from requesting it because it's a pretty painless process, generally speaking. Now, your other option here, this little request scan specific pages, honestly, it's kind of exactly the same thing. It's just here. This is your pre-filled form. Again, you can specify if you want this, and this is usually something you might use if you want just a chapter from a book, um, but this is all here, submit request, and again, it will end up right back in your, oh, I had an error. So if I did it and I didn't have an error, it would just, again, it would deposit it straight into Iliad in that same platform that you saw before. So. ILL, give it a shot, use it if you need it. It's pretty good and we're always happy to get you stuff. Okay, great. Okay, changing gears. Let's talk about the research guides. So here on the main library page, if you come to the guides tab, you'll see that there's a few different kinds of guides. There is, so the research guides are kind of like, um, they're directories to research resources for every topic that's taught at Middlebury and of course every language that's taught at Middlebury and they're constructed by the subject specialist for that language or that subject area. So one thing I could do if I was studying French in the language schools I could come to subject guides and I pull this link open and you see that they're arranged alphabetically so I could come to the French research guide, say French, click go, and you'll see that it'll bring me to this guide to resources that are particularly relevant for research in French or for French. And this page, this first page, we'll see this sort of like some, some top hits, some main things. And of course, this one's constructed more for the academic year uh, rather than the language schools, but it could still be very useful to people here for the language schools as well. There's a tab for reference works, for locating books, uh, for locating articles, which will go into greater depth, you know, not just the top hits, but maybe some more specific items as well. Uh, primary sources. Here under multimedia, hopefully there is a way to search for films, um, some French learning resources, and then some more generalized advice on citation, uh, advice for using uh, library resources off campus, etc. So these guides are just full of 
links to specific things that might be particularly useful for research in a given language. Let me come back. So this is the same interface that we saw on the library page. It's just displayed a little bit differently. And, oh, that's not the one I want. They're arranged differently too. Um, just to show you, there is also a more general language schools library guide. So this is a guide that is specifically for the language schools as a whole, um, but it also has some specialized information that could be particularly useful to you as a student at the summer language schools. Um, you'll find the recordings for these orientation videos here. Uh, you can register for synchronous orientation sessions here. Uh, some more general information about using the library is all here. And then, uh, what else? Oh, if you scroll down a little bit, this is also a place where you can find links to the research guides for specific languages. Um, and so here are all the languages that are happening on the Middlebury campus, but also you'll find links to the languages that are being taught at the Bennington campus in Southern Vermont, both our research guides and Bennington's research guides for those languages, right? This is designed to be kind of a easy one-stop place for language school students to come and find all kinds of resources that will be useful to them. Um, a few specific things, and we'll cover some of this in separate videos, um, but if you're looking for newspaper, magazines, things to read, uh, media information, <clears throat> finding films in your language through the library, stuff like that. You can find all of that in here as well. So I just really want you to know that the research guides for the language schools more broadly and for specific languages can be a super useful resource just to kind of help point you in the right direction for the resources that you need to access library materials and sources as easily as possible. And then of course, also don't forget about us, the librarians like me, we're also happy to help you navigate library materials and systems and the research guides and all of that. That's what we're here for. So I hope that you will make use of all of these tools during your time at the Middlebury Language Schools. So I hope this video was helpful. As your time at the language school progresses, I'm sure you'll think of more questions, in which case I encourage you to get in touch with a Middlebury librarian. You can find us most afternoons at the research desk at Davis Family Library, or you can reach out to us via the webpage at go slash ask us, where you will find an extensive FAQ, as well as ways to get in touch with us by chat, text, email, or by scheduling a one-on-one -on -one consultation with a librarian for your in-depth research questions. We're always happy to help. And thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your summer, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye.